Ever wanted to know what it was like to be a pirate out on the free open seas, enjoying the breeze and your long luscious hair that's probably full of lice? Just an overall fun time, really. And you know, I'm talking about those pirates that you typically see in pop culture type of situations, you know, books, movies, TV shows, anime. They got the long shaggy beards, or in my case, the uh, hard rock neck look. By the way, I work pretty hard on it. What the hell? I hope you guys like it. Uh no all right these teeth are killing me i know these teeth these teeth are freaking terrible <laughs> but yeah you know what i mean like the shaggy beard you know the hat the, the the little hook hand the eye patch the pipe and the yellow teeth of course so i'm gonna talk about those pirates in this video so uh let's just dive in shall we so the period of piracy that i'm talking about is known as the golden age of piracy and this period took place from roughly the 1650s to the 1730s and some historians argue that this period actually started in the 1690s either way this is a period that is super romanticized in pop culture as you're already aware of and so it's received a lot of attention throughout the years and it's kind of weird because you know piracy has existed since antiquity so it, it wasn't like this new thing but the golden age of piracy was a time when piracy flourished in areas like the Caribbean Sea the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean and this is due to a combination of reasons I cannot take myself seriously. I keep looking at myself at the camera and I'm like, that five o'clock shadow, that, that 20 o'clock shadow with those yellow teeth. So this golden age of piracy came about because of a few reasons. One of those reasons was imperialism. It always goes back to imperialism, you know, and colonization. When Spanish colonizer or explorer, whichever one you prefer, uh, Christopher Columbus set sail from Spain and accidentally stumbled upon islands of the Caribbean, specifically the Bahamas. Sorry, y'all. It was an accident. Sorry. The Spanish found that this, quote, new world they discovered, quote, had a lot of wealth, like gold, silver, precious gems, and valuable resources. And this would not only attract Spain, but it would also attract other European nations as well. You know, they saw what Spain was doing and they were like, man, I want some of that. I want precious gems and gold and resources we don't have access to over here. So the Spanish would transport these goods on ships from the New World to Spain. And these ships, as well as the ports they would sail from, would come under attack, they'd be raided. And although Spain was a powerful nation, it became impossible to protect all these treasure ships because there was a lack of governance as well as military protection. These ports were also far from Spain's reach and the journey was a long one for these ships as well. Typically, these dudes who attacked these Spanish ships and ports were called buccaneers. And they were usually Dutch, English, or French privateers who operated out of the Caribbean. And if you're not familiar with what a privateer was. They were private individuals who were authorized by the government, usually during times of war, to attack and capture enemy vessels. And they were literally issued a government license to engage in piracy against another government's enemies because other European nations wanted all these resources the Spanish were getting from the Americas. And boy, did the Spanish have a lot of haters because of the wealth they were amassing due to the new world. And among some of those haters was the French and the English. This privateering business was a way for nations to wage economic warfare against each other without, you know, having to get their hands really dirty. At least not directly. But some buccaneers would not only raid Spanish ships, they would raid ships with cargo from all over the place. They, some of them did, just did not give a shit. They would raid cargo from other governments and organizations, and they would even go after fellow privateers. Some of them just did not care. 
anyone could get it. They would raid merchant ships, slave ships, warships, which is freaking crazy, fishing vessels. I mean, they like, you got some salmon, you know what I'm saying? You got some shrimp, I'll take it. But privateering as a whole became a legit profession for folks and not just for buccaneers. It was a very profitable profession. And this was during a time where people were really struggling and there wasn't a lot of opportunity. Privateering gave people the opportunity to improve their quality quality of life, you know, financially, support their families, because the other options made available to them oftentimes really fucking sucked. I mean, as a young man, you could maybe find a profession or a trade that you want to get into, apprentice under someone for seven years, and then hopefully maybe be able to then work within that trade and scrape by. I mean, it was a very difficult time for people. So I mean, can you really blame them at the end of the day? Eventually, when the wars ended, privateers found themselves in a bit of a pickle. They no longer had the government's blessing to conduct pirate activities. And without this blessing, it now goes from privateering to piracy. Funny how that works. These governments just expected these dudes to just suddenly stop participating in these illicit activities that has supported them as well as their families back home for years as soon as it no longer met their needs. Imagine having a profession that was seen as legitimate for, I don't know, your lifetime and your, your dad's lifetime, your grandpappy's lifetime, and then all of a sudden, the carpet is just pulled from right under you. And this is all you know. You don't have any other skills. So many of these privateers were like, nah, not today, son. And on top of that, you've also got sailors who turn to piracy as well, because after the end of war times, that's all they know, you know, is sailing, I guess, <laughs> during war times. And now we're in a time of peace, so um, arg, time to pirate. So privateers decided to keep going without the legal protection they got during wartime. And European governments did not like this at all because these pirate activities were putting a strain on trade. The period began to come to an end when the Royal British Navy, the British East India Company, and colonial governors took aggressive action towards piracy. And they would capture and ultimately execute hundreds of pirates from London all the way to the Carolinas. Carolinas, and piracy would come to a rapid decline by 1720, and it eventually fizzled out. So now on to what it was actually like to be a pirate. There were so many aspects about pirate life that I could talk about. I mean, the list goes on and on. So there are a few things that I wanted to focus on that I found to be interesting, but you know, maybe, maybe a part two pirate life video in the future. So one thing that I found interesting was learning about the pirate code. Pirates had their own code of conduct and it was known as Article of agreement. The inspiration behind these articles was maritime laws and privateer codes. And I mean, this makes sense. And the specifics of a pirate code could vary from crew to crew and sometimes from even trip to trip. But there were some that were like a standard, you know, across the board. Like for example, how stolen goods would be divided amongst the crew. And this could, you know, be based on status within the crew or not. You know, it could be an equal distribution, whatever the crew agreed upon. And this could also include how crew members would be disciplined should they violate that code based on, you know, how they split up the booty. Some additional provisions could include how decisions were made. And this could include all crew members having the right to vote, no matter their rank. There was also compensation for members who were injured while doing piratey stuff. They even had their own form of temporary disability insurance. I find that to be fascinating and I think that's great. And this one's random, but this is also one that I was already familiar with because of, you know, pop culture and all that jazz, but it was seen as bad luck for women to be aboard the ship. And so this could be in a pirate's code of conduct laws whatever. And this makes me interested to know, you know, how did this work when it came to crews that had a woman as a captain? Because there are some famous, you know, women captains throughout history. How did that work? 
I don't know, maybe there was an addendum for these crews <laughs> or did they just have really bad luck? And here's another interesting one. And it kind of reminds me of like a, another type of insurance, you know, with the, the short-term disability. Some pirates would enter into an economic partnership where they would share their income with another crew member. And if one died, the other would inherit their partner's property. And this agreement was called Mat Matatalage? M Mateolage? I should have looked that up before <laughs> I sat down. Matelotage. 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 Okay, so the agreement was called Matelotage. <gasps> Oh, Laurier, you uncultured swine. Some historians argue that this was what we would call a domestic partnership and a way for pirates in same-sex relationships to validate their relationship. Piracy was a very male-dominated industry profession. So it wouldn't be unreasonable to say that there were some same-sex relationships amongst crew members. However, some historians argue against this and, you know, think that they're kind of like, you know, grasping at straws here. But either way, I think it's really cool that they set that up and it was really smart. They could be in a relationship where they could just be really, really close bros. What is that one word? I saw that one video. <gasps> Bro! Punishment. Now this one ties into the pirate code of conduct. Although they were pirates, it was important to maintain some order, otherwise it all falls apart. But what happened when a crew member violated that code? Punishment could vary from crew to crew, or even from trip to trip, and it would be based on the level of the violation. Some punishments could include fines, a crew member could be fined and the amount depended on the offense, and the money was typically added to a fund that would be dispersed amongst the crew members. There was also flogging. The offender could receive a set number of lashes based on the severity of the offense. And then there was also forfeiture of the booty or loot. If a member of the crew committed a serious act of betrayal, like mutiny, for example, the crew might cast a vote to take the offender's share of the loot. There was also shunning, you know, just acting like the crew member didn't exist at all. Shun the non-believer. Shun. Shun. And then there was this one punishment, which I don't know, this one feels very terrifying to me. Marooning. This was really brutal. Marooning was when the offending crew member was left stranded on a deserted island with the intent of being that they would starve to death or die from exposure to the elements. That's pretty crazy. And then of course you could be executed. That was also a way to punish people. And hanging was the very popular method. I honestly would prefer that than marooning. Marooning just sounds like very long drawn out and horrific health and hygiene pirates had limited access to clean water when they were out at sea so they would sometimes rely on rain water that they would collect during storms and this water would be stored for drinking cooking and bathing but not so much bathing there wasn't as much bathing you know what i mean it was you know, there were other things that water was necessary for that was higher on the priority list to these folks, you know, this is like the 17th century, so. So, you know, there was limited opportunity for bathing, especially in the cramped conditions that they were living in. You know, this wasn't the Ritz-Carlton. Plainliness was not next to godliness. In fact, it was common for pirates to wear the same clothes for days on end. It's quite pungent. And these people were living in very cramped spaces. So you're not coming on board with your Louis V suitcase set, okay? Very tight living quarters not a lot of room for a lot of packing. And wearing these dirty clothes every single day could lead to skin irritations as well as skin infections. Waste disposal was also lacking, as you can imagine. Remember, this was like the 17th to the early 18th century, so you can imagine how sterile and efficient their approach was to getting rid of poo and the like. It was a super complex and advanced approach for its time that consisted of, I'm just kidding, okay? It was a very rudimentary process all right they just took the waste and they just chucked it out into the ocean and throwing it into the sea contributed to the spread of disease in surrounding areas in addition to unsanitary conditions there was also rudimentary health care a crew was lucky if they had a surgeon on board but this is the 17th century we're talking about so it was unfortunately a 17th century surgeon there was also the risk of vitamin c deficiency which was a common ailment due to a lack of fresh fruits and veggies and this would result 
result in crews coming down with scurvy. And symptoms of scurvy include anemia, fatigue, lethargy, malaise, gum disease, swelling, poor wound healing, and bone pain. I don't know what the fuck bone pain feels like, and I hope I never know what that feels like. That sounds horrific. Fuck a bone pain. There was also, of course, the potential for other diseases to spread. Venereal diseases like syphilis and gonorrhea were also in circulation. You could visit a port for some recreation and bring back an infestation. The life of a pirate really seems super interesting to me. You know, there's that whole romanticized idea of what life was like for pirates during this time. And while there were some aspects about it that kind of were in that alignment, I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool, man. Wow, living life in the fast lane, good for you. But the origins of the pirate is very fascinating and very different from what we imagine based on the information we've been given in main media, but it's still super fascinating. Would I want to live during that time? Hell no. You people who go to Renaissance festivals, dressing as pirates, talking about ARG and how you would love to live during this period, fuck that. You're on your own, buddy. No thank you. I like penicillin, amongst other things. There is something cool that I like about, you know, saying fuck you to the government and doing your own thing and having your, you know, crusty hair flowing in the wind with your yellow teeth, living life to the fullest and raiding ships and shit. That does sound kind of cool. But then I think about how much those ships probably smelt like ass and I'm knocked right back into reality. Anyway, folks, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time.